research product at William O'Neill and Company is joining us right now. Dean, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, how are things looking? Are they uh, muddied a bit more as we approach the end of the year? Uh, because uh, volumes globally have also dropped off. In the US, for example, this week there's this Thanksgiving holiday, volumes uh, were low. Uh, but, uh, you know, this pullback rally seems to be fizzling out. Uh, equities are down, rates are up, and uh, you've got the, uh, you know, dollar which is higher as well. What's your sense? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting. We've heard the, the Fed speaker uh, just just now, and, um, you know, economic data is everything. So we had a good reaction to lower than expected uh, October CPI reading on November 10. And so the S&P 500 reacted really well in the print and the index continues to find support at the 100 day moving average with the next resistance at uh, basically 200 day moving average, which is 3% higher. NASDAQ reacted also positively as well, but the index has yet to break above the 100 uh, DMA that the uh, S&P managed to do. Uh, but and still has 200 day moving average resistance to contend with uh, as well. But as long as uh, both indices stay above the intraday lows in November 10, uh, we would continue to label the US market in a confirmed uptrend. Um, and so I think um, uh, every bit of data that we see uh, going forward, uh, whether it be CPI data or employment data, uh, I think it's going to be critical in terms of um, predicting where the Fed is going to go. Um, so if we get another reading in December 13 for November uh, CPI reading and it comes in um, lower than expected, uh, I, th I think the market has a chance to, uh, uh, you know, sort of get a year end rally. Uh, th so that's where we're sitting right now. OK, uh, Dean, hi, good morning and thanks for being with us. What about your view on the Nifty? Uh, given all the volatility, we're still above the 100, uh, 200 and 50 day moving average on the Nifty. So do you think that the uptrend is intact and what are the levels to watch over the next couple of months? Yeah, I, I mean, India, Indian, Indian market has been fantastic. Um, we do notice that um, if you look at AAXJ, which is the ETF, uh, Asia X Japan, um, there has been a bit of a character change. So AAXJ has uh, broken above the 100 day moving average, hasn't done that in quite a while. Um, and uh, it is kind of retreating a little bit. but. Um, uh, I, I think that's an interesting character change. India, you know, continues to be on the uh, confirmed uptrend uh, path. Uh, we see next support 1% uh, away at the 21-day moving average. I'm talking about the Sensex. Um, and, and as well, there's a 50-day moving average support, uh, which is 3% away. Um, the, the market continues to look uh, pretty solid. I mean, you know, last time I was on, um, I commented we should avoid uh, extended stocks. Uh, there's a, I, I continue to see some extended stocks, but also uh, glad to see a lot of uh, stocks breaking out from early stage basis. Uh, so that's that's a great sign. It's a very healthy market. Uh, plus, on top of that, you know, you have uh, oil prices kind of retreating, and as well as uh, U.S. dollar retreating as well. And I think uh, they're supportive of India as well as rest of uh, Asia, in fact. Mm. Hi, Dean. Good morning. Uh, you know, since you spoke about crude as well as the dollar index, where do you see both those two headed? Uh, it's very, very important from an India market perspective. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, for U.S. dollar, uh, we see, you know, it's sort of in a downtrend at the moment. We see next uh, uh, support at 105. That's sort of like the 200-day moving average. Um, so if it, if it breaks that level, then I think it could go a lot lower. Uh, but then if it uh, reverts on the uh, upside, we see 109 as resistance. Uh, so we're kind of in, in, in those two ranges. So we'll see how it goes. But I, I believe uh, U.S. dollar is going to test uh, support at 105, uh, given the fact that, you know, um, perhaps the Fed is going to start easing off in terms of uh, raising rates. Um, so that's usually, you know, uh, a better sign for uh, the U.S. current U.S. dollar to sort of uh, back off. Uh, as for oil, uh, we're currently uh, at around eighty dollars in terms of index. Uh, I, I think it's poised to downside support at seventy six dollars uh, and then at seventy three. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if oil continues to uh, go lower. Um, you know, if you look at the demand uh, globally. Um, you know, for example, inflation in the U.S., if you look at the demand side, is only 1%. It's the supply side, supply-driven uh, 
inflation that's a problem. Um, and uh, I, th I think uh, that speaks to you know oil prices coming down globally. Uh, there's just not not as much demand uh, given mm -hmm. economic uh, cycles that we're in. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's true. But that's been true always, right, uh, Dean? I mean, oil demand, world oil demand growth grows about one, one and a half percent annually. That's it. Uh, and that the pace of that increase is also coming off. Uh, just to, uh, Dean, a quick uh, point on uh, expectations of uh, Fed starting to ease off, etc. You know, the point is they may not, the pace of hikes may come off, uh, but uh, they may take it up, the rates may go up to five and then stay there for six months, right? Uh, now, th th that'll, that'll be painful uh, for some time. So do you expect uh, markets to uh, react in anticipation of when, uh, you know, uh, the six months will be over or only once the Fed actually starts to cut rates will, uh, you know, uh, markets respond? What's your sense? Uh, I, I think um, first uh, we have to deal with the, the data that's going to come through. So, for instance, CPI data, if it comes in lower again in December, uh, I think we'll get a positive reaction and then uh, you know reactions from non-farm payroll you know employment type data if it comes in weaker than expected um, then I, I think we're going to get a positive reaction um, also you know uh, I keep looking at uh, inflation break-even uh, data going forward and uh, you know the bond market is uh, expecting 2.3 to 2.5 percent inflation by the end of 2023. So if that is the case, then I would expect uh, the Fed to, at some point, uh, completely reverse and start cutting rates, perhaps, um, you know, third quarter, fourth quarter next year. Um, but market's going to be reacting well ahead of that. Uh, and so, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if the U.S. market starts to accelerate uh, sort of midpoint next year. Okay, the U.S. market starts to accelerate midpoint next year. That's, I guess, an optimistic view coming in. Dean, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks a lot for taking the time out and speaking to CNBC TV.